Some minor changes to the regular traffic routes are in effect in St. George's. This is to facilitate emergency work between the Young Street and Scott Street intersection. Details from Carrie Maureen. Emergency works between the intersection of Young Street and Scott Street by the Ministry of Works has led to various changes in traffic arrangements in the town of St. George. Superintendent Jesman Prince, officer in charge of the traffic department, says discussions with the relevant parties have enabled the department to reach an arrangement that will allow the smooth flow of traffic in the city. After careful planning and uh, searching for areas that we would be able to correct the problem, uh, we came up with the solution of uh, Church Street, which normally would have had the flow of traffic in one direction. We recognize if we could have changed the traffic flow in the opposite direction, we would have been able to, to achieve the objective of having vehicles exit the city for the south side of our country with no, with, without no problem at all, or with very little problem. Uh, we, had, we had looked at the alternative route of Church Street, that is to change the direction of the flow of traffic on Church Street, and they all agreed that it is something that we can perhaps check, check out or test out to see if it, if it would work. And so on Saturday, uh, for about one hour between the hours of 11 a.m. and 12 midday, we would have run an exercise or a test run on that route, and we found it to be pretty successful. Um, the anticipation uh, was one that we felt satisfied that we would have been able to use that route as an alternate route um, out of the city. He says his officers have been on the ground and signs have been placed at locations to guide motorists. So far the exercise that we would have conducted on Saturday, as I said before, uh, was successful. Um, and this morning, well Sunday, the whole of Sunday we actually saw the traffic change on Sunday and those people who were in the city on Sunday would have uh, experienced that change. But those who were coming into the city for the first time uh, this morning would have actually come into a situation where the, the flow of traffic was different. And they would have, uh, we would have seen the surprise on their faces and the questions that they would ask us because we had our officers on the ground and they were given direction. There was a lot of tolerance because we recognized that there was a need to allow people to make mistakes and, 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 and then point them in the direction. So we were able to do that and I would say perhaps around 9, 10 o'clock we start seeing things picking up and, and really flowing smoothly. Church Street is still single lane so you're coming out from Halifax Street or uh, the junction with Halifax and Church Street uh, to the junction with uh, Church Street and Market Hill. That is a single lane but you're flowing in the opposite direction now. So the persons who have businesses on that area will not be affected really because there will be some parking uh, parking will be allowed on that street, uh, except for the area between um, the junction with now uh, Corp Bank and the junction with Halifax Street. That area there is a, it's a completely no parking area. The superintendent says the traffic department has dialogued with property owners between the Carinage and Scott Street to allow vehicular traffic through their premises. Scott Street is closed for the moment but uh, there is still access to Scott Street um, and persons wanting to be engaged in any business on Scott Street because quite a number of businesses are still open for, for service on Scott Street and uh, we are advising persons who are wanting to access business there to use that, that, uh, that road um, between Julian's building and the building I think that is Mac Levi when you are traveling along the carnage there is that there's that road there that, um, that is accessible, and that will take you back on uh, Scott Street. And so wherever you want to go on Scott Street, whether you want to turn left or right on Scott Street, you basically have the, 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 the freedom to do that. So uh, it is not um, um, denying persons access to those areas. It's just that uh, we are trying to avoid anybody wanting to exit on Scott Street on that junction there with, um, with Lucas Street and H.A. Blaze Street because now that the traffic is flowing heavily from the direction of Lucas Street on the opposite side, we do not want to have any problems there. And there will be no lights to control the flow of traffic on, on, on Scott Street. So persons approaching, if for some reason they have to exit on that area, we're asking them to approach it with extreme caution and look left and right and seek the, the, the permission of the police officer who will be there to allow them to exit.
Mr. Prince says vehicles that cannot use the Sendal Tunnel can use the back road by Nawasa, down the Granitang Road by the police headquarters, and make their way to Church Street. However, he said if these vehicles have no business on the Karanaj, motorists should use alternative routes such as Lothar's Lane and Achibal Avenue. Young Street is only accessible via the Karanaj and the streets between Coates Grenada Limited and the National Museum. Vehicular traffic is not allowed from Halifax Street onto Young Street. From the intersection of Young Street and Scott Street, I am Karen Moraine reporting. 25% of crops produced in the region is stolen every year. This is one of the findings of months of investigation into a problem that plagues farmers in every Caribbean country, Predia Larceny. As part of Caribbean Week of Agriculture, Antigua and Barbuda's agriculture minister will go before his OECS counterparts on Wednesday with a paper on Predia Larceny. Mr. Hilson N. Batiste says Predia Larceny affects not only farmers but food security. At the same time, he says farmers are forced to take drastic measures to deal with the problem themselves, which often result in the practice of spraying crops with dangerous chemicals. This in turn undermines the quality and safety of food consumed. If a farmer sprays vegetables and somebody goes to steal them, then that food with the chemical in it is going in the food chain and can create some serious problems for our people. For any one of us in here, if the supermarket buys it or the, or the the vendors buys it and sells it over, you're buying bad food and it's a problem. So we're looking at how to tackle that, the licensing of vendors, licensing of farmers, registration of farmers. So anytime you buy a vegetable, you have to make sure that the farmer is a registered farmer and the vendor is a registered farmer, a vendor. So if something goes wrong with you buying that food, you can sue that vendor. So we're trying to make sure that everybody's responsible enough. Minister Batiste says the subject of better security measures must come into play if farmers' produce is to be protected. We're battling a law that was created in the, in, 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 in the 1800s. After slavery and, 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 and our people were given lands to farm, they were told and there was a law that they could not put down permanent structures on the, on the farm. So there's no ownership. So they put a shack there and that law continues today. So you find farmers with chemicals, dangerous chemicals, in some little ramshackle stuff on their farms that make it more dangerous and all the rest of it, the use of chemicals. What we're saying, if a farmer is able to put more permanent structure on their farm, they can then live there and reduce the level of pretty elastic and then to provide better safety for chemicals and other use of other equipments and so on on their farms. If you don't live on your farm, you can have a worker staying there. You can provide better security for your farm. And that 25% that the, of the crop that we lose should pretty really last the can see a reduction, a serious reduction, it's even down to about 5%. Predia larceny and risk management are included on the nine constraints document that will be presented before agriculture ministers on Wednesday. Other topics include water and land management, natural disasters and financing. The parliamentary representative for St. Andrew Northeast wants the office of the Prime Minister to look into allegations made against a senior Ministry of Finance official by Mr. Edward Fide, who until recently was coordinator at GREP. During a recent meeting of the House of Representatives, Mr. Roland Bowler said he is concerned that no word from the government side has yet been forthcoming following serious accusations leveled against the finance official. There you had the person who coordinated that project making serious accusations about a senior official within the Ministry of Finance. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, the gentleman went further on to say that after uncovering some wrongdoings by the individual, he would have written to and approached the Minister of Finance on more than one occasion. That was his words. And subsequently went on to say that he would have also spoken to the Prime Minister. Whether those things are true or not, I don't know. All I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, is that in light of the fact that we have always heard from the government, and in particular our Prime Minister, that he is prepared to run a government that is transparent, that he would love to follow the rule of law, I would have thought that by now, a statement would have emanated from either the Prime Minister's office or the Ministry of Finance, 
either saying that they would have already carried out an investigation or looked into those accusations and that there is no truth to it, or maybe another statement saying that we are prepared as a government to look into those issues. Because I believe accusations of that nature being heard throughout the region can jeopardize the, f the project as it is. In response, Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas said they must be responsible in their manner of handling a matter of this nature. He said he only heard from Mr. Fede after he had already left the country. The only time uh, Fede spoke to me is from after he left the country, I, I got a phone call from him after he gave his interview to the radio and saying to me that he was under pressure for months in the Ministry of Finance. He never spoke to me before. On the contrary, I had reports about Mr. Fede, which I contacted the Commissioner of Police before he left here. He never complained to me why he was about any problem within the Ministry of Finance. It's when he left the country, after he gave his interview on the, the radio, he called me by telephone in an apologetic way, saying that he didn't want to do it, but um, he was under pressure for months in the Ministry of Finance. Why, well, I, I, you know, so I, it's a strange sort of a development. So Mr. Fede never complained to me about problems within the, um, his jobs and, uh, and so on. I know people had doubts about the way he handled some of his, uh, his business. So Mr. the member for St. Andrews notice it's sometimes it's good to you know, find out why, why couldn't he speak before he, he left Grenada? Why he had to leave Grenada and, and call on a particular radio station to do his views? We have to be um, responsible as, you know, as members of, our, of parliament and we shouldn't let you know, certain people conduct themselves in such a way and at the same time trying to implicate you know, those in authority. There's a trend, people trying to be quite deceptive using statements without any source and trying to get at other people. It, all it's a political game as I said, and I think we should try to avoid it. So for the record, Mr. Speaker, I never had any complaint from Mr. Fede in Grenada. He called me after he gave his interview on the radio station complaining about his experience in the Ministry of Finance. Finance Minister Nassenburg also addressed the subject, saying there is a chain of command that must be followed. He added that it is not necessary at this time to make a public statement on what is being done. If any member of our team simply bypass the superiors and come and make a complaint about another member, we have to be very responsible about how we respond to those. You know, not simply by acting on it, but rather asking that the chain be followed and perhaps taking the issue back and looking to see what happened. We are not averse to looking into complaints. Now, if Mr. Fede has an issue and he says that he wrote to me or he spoke to the Prime Minister, um, perhaps sometimes when I write to people and I don't hear, I send a second letter. Sometimes I say, look, it is possible the person did not read the letter or see the letter. Perhaps I should send another letter. Or perhaps I should follow up that letter with a phone call. My first reaction is not to go on the radio and make a statement. And regrettably, or perhaps fortunately, the public servant who is accused does not have the freedom to simply go on the radio and respond to what is said. There are rules governing his conduct. And there are rules that prevent him from simply going on the radio and answering back and making statements. He has a responsibility to act within the confines of the public service regulations. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back.